world's wildest weather. Coming up on world's wildest weather. Living through a direct hit from a powerful tornado. It went from calm and serene to total chaos and, and the snap of the fingers. Oh my God, Starbucks just got blown over. And an amazing escape from an alpine avalanche. I told myself, okay, now you might die. But first, Hurricane Matthew brings record floods to southern states in America. The 24th of August, 2016. Indiana, the United States of America. It seems like a typical summer day in the small Midwestern city of Kokomo. At Chili's Bar and Grill, close to the mall on the edge of town, Brandon Mobley is working on the air conditioning unit. The weather on the day of the tornado was, was pleasant, it was sunny, just a few clouds, but, but not enough to even cast shade. It was just a, a beautiful, normal day, and uh, you, you'd never even thought that severe weather was anywhere near or approaching. Real estate agent Shelley Dyer has an appointment in the city. I had gone to lunch earlier in the day with a friend, and it was sunny skies. From there, I went to the meeting in Kokomo, and on the way down to Kokomo, it began kind of misting and darkening a bit. The meeting has been organized at a coffee shop across the parking lot from Chili's. I went in, kind of noticed that it was getting darker and darker outside, but there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, nothing that made me feel alarmed. Local storm chaser James Longwith is following the weather reports with interest. There was some showers and precipitation over the area and clouds overhead, and there was a marginal risk for severe weather here over Indiana. Shortly before three o'clock, Brandon gets his first warning of the problems ahead. I received an alert on my cell phone from the local weather station uh, alerting me that there potentially could be tornadoes in my area. I did not take it seriously because the sky was pretty much clear and I actually thought it was a mistake. But just 15 minutes later, storm clouds are gathering over Indiana. Shelley's meeting continues despite a growing commotion in the coffee shop. You know, we all kind of noticed the, the beeping and whatnot, and, and it said, you know, tornado warning, and we all just pretty much disregarded it and continued with our meeting. Uh, I didn't feel any kind of worry or anxiety about it, just normal. It's Indiana. Often we get them enough that it's not an alarming thing to see a tornado warning. Well, it wasn't at that point. <laughs> pay a little more attention now to them. <laughs> James has been tracking the weather system he sees signs of a major storm powering towards Kokomo. I grabbed my camera gear and my laptop and I got it set up in my car. I was getting ready to go out and start filming. Back at Chili's, Brandon suddenly realizes the storm is very close and he is directly in the line of fire. When I looked straight up above me in the sky and there were debris literally flying hundreds of feet above me, and it just brought flashbacks to movies and went inside to seek shelter. In the coffee shop next door, the manager, Angel, kicks off the emergency drill. He came up to us and said, we need to go to the bathroom for safety. The sky when the tornado was approaching was gray and eerie, and there was trash and debris just flying everywhere. It was, it was pretty chaotic. Hunkering down in the bathroom, Shelley can't see the tornado, but she can hear it. The first thing that, that I heard as the, as the tornado approached was debris hitting the side of the, the building. It became very real at that point. It was very hushed in there. You could have heard a pin drop. Brandon is now sheltering inside the nearby Chili's, filming the impact of winds of over 150 miles an hour on his city. I was just taken aback by the, the view of the tornado. I mean, it was, it was huge. It was a big, massive thing. Within a matter of seconds, the power was out. There was debris flying outside. Anything movable was blowing away from the tornado. Uh, it, it went from calm and serene to total chaos 
and, and the snap of the fingers. Couldn't see anything. It was a it was a bathroom. We were all just kind of trying to listen for what was happening. It, it sounded like things were blowing around in the in the dining room, and then there was a crash. Oh my God! Starbucks just got blown over. The full force of the tornado smashes through the coffee shop. It was almost like it was a house made of paper and the big bad wolf blew and it just blew over. The top came up, lifted straight up and then fell over. The walls crashed down. It literally just pushed over. And it was terrifying. I didn't know if Chili's was going to be next. The EF3 force tornado is pummeling a wrecked and ruined Starbucks building with winds of 150 miles per hour. And a terrified Shelley Dyer is trapped in the wreckage of the coffee shop as the storm rages above her. August 2016. A tornado with winds in excess of 150 miles per hour has swept through the Indiana city of Kokomo, destroying a coffee shop. Oh my God, Starbucks just got blown over. Shelley Dyer has survived the impact, but is trapped in the wreckage with more than 20 other people. At that point, I felt like I was in, in danger. It felt like, almost like when you're in a car accident and you, you can see it happening, but you can't really do anything about it. But we couldn't even see anything. So it was just listening. Brandon Mobley is over the road in another restaurant, filming the tornado on his phone. The parking lot was full of cars. I knew there were a number of people inside. Oh my God, there's people in there. All you could see is literally Starbucks laying on the ground and no people. It, it looked really bad. All the noise happened, all the clanking and the debris and whatever, that all happened and then it was just quiet. And, you know, we kind of all looked around at each other, we're okay, we're okay. And, and so then it became, you know, how do we get out of here? Because we couldn't open the door. I called 911, but I knew it would be time before they got there. So I, I, I ran out of the building, hoping I might be able to help somebody. Um, I, I didn't know if there were any survivors or not. Looking at the building, you would not think there were any survivors. Brandon rushes over from the restaurant where he has been sheltering to the Starbucks to see if there is anyone left alive. We found the bathroom door still standing upright and when we beat on the walls and the doors, you can hear the people inside. We heard a voice outside. Now I know it was Brandon and you could hear the fear in his voice. And he says, are you guys okay? Is, there, is everybody okay? Is anybody in there? And. You know, we kind of all looked at each other and we're, yeah, we're fine. Just get us out of here. And he says, the whole building fell down. I'm moving bricks. I'm moving blocks. We were able to get the doors up and out away from the debris and pile and uh, the rubble and allowed to help those people get out of there one by one. They pulled the door out and we climbed out across the blocks. Once I got out of there and I looked at the building, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that it's completely demolished. But the two bathrooms were standing. The only two things standing were those two bathrooms. It felt like a miracle that we survived that. It didn't look like anybody would survive that. Nobody even had a scratch. We all mulled around in the parking lot, because what do you do? And then I got in the car and drove off. I mean. It was crazy. Just a few miles away, James films the same extreme weather system as it roars across the Indiana countryside. Then, he too has his own terrifying close encounter with a tornado. The tornado began to touch down in front of us on this road, so we just kind of stayed in our car and hoped for the best. We were very, very near that tornado. Um, our ears were popping from the pressure drop. Um, my fiance was in the car and you could hear her yelling at me to back up. James, back up! 
We could hear the debris of the tree limbs and branches hitting the side of the car. We were running over them. At one point, um, a realtor sign started getting hurled towards us as we were backing up. And at one moment, um, there was a trampoline that went over someone's fence and was rolling alongside the, our car. There's a car, there's a car, there's a car! You know, I got this tornado coming right on towards me. I don't know how strong it is, how big it's gonna become. So I was definitely scared. When the winds finally died down, and the tornado was moving away from us. That's the, probably the moment that I felt safe and could just take a little breather and go, we just survived, you know, being inside a tornado. 1,000 homes were damaged in the Kokomo area, causing an estimated $10 million worth of destruction in one of the biggest tornado outbreaks ever seen in Indiana. Back home, Shelley watches Brandon's Starbucks footage with her young daughter. That's when it got me. My daughter says, Mommy, did anybody live? I said, that's where I was. When she said that, I thought, oh my gosh. I mean, we really were lucky. That footage is terrifying to me. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. I think I've just learned that Mother Nature is something that you need to need to respect. Mm -hmm.